All right, so we're going to talk about soups. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the clear soup. Uh, clear soup is made from a clear stock. Uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, clear soups are not thickened. Uh, a lot of times they'll use uh, bouillon cubes or they'll use a uh, base to make the stock. Um, basically, it's simmered meats and vegetables mixed together. All right, uh, steps for making a clear soup. You're going to simmer uh, or brown your meats, uh, sweat your vegetables, um, add your flavor to your soup. Uh, with the, when you sweat the vegetables, it adds a little bit of color and it adds flavor. You don't want to brown your vegetables when you are doing this. Um, then the second step is to add the stock to it. Uh, third step is to, I, I usually bring it to a boil then turn it down to a simmer. Um, and then uh, skim any impurities that are on the top off and then adjust the seasoning, serve the soup. It's just that simple. Nothing, nothing that hard. Um, next we're going to talk about is consomme. Okay, so consomme is a concentrated clear soup that's made of a rich broth. And you can see right here how clear it is. Uh, I'm not going to go through the steps here in this video. Uh, well, in the video, it's going to be it's going to be gone over. I'm not going to go through it in the PowerPoint. Um, but all right, after the PowerPoint, you're going to see me making consomme. Okay, doke. Um, thick soups. Thick soups are not clear. Um, they're or transparent. Uh, they usually have a thickening agent such as roux, cream, or a vegetable puree. And you can see there's a variety of them here in front of you. All right. Uh, pureed soups. Uh, soups are thickened uh, by grinding up the soup's main ingredient. So usually like a split pea or navy bean or butternut squash. Um, and here's the steps to make that. So you're going to cut your vegetables up. You're going to sweat them in the in the, the stock pot at a, slow, at a low temperature. Add the liquid, such as stock. You can use water. You can use cream. Doesn't matter which one you want to use. Um, add starchy vegetables, which is going to be the split peas or the, the, the beans, the black beans, whatever kind of uh, starchy vegetable you're going to use. Simmer it until the vegetables are cooked. Now, this is important. Make sure that you don't overcook them. You don't want to, don't, don't think to yourself, if I cook them till they're mushy, they're going to be better. No, the mushy, you lo it loses its uh, thickening agent, the thickening power. So you want to cook them until they're done, but not until they're overcooked. Um, then you're going to puree the soup using a food processor or a blender or an immersion uh, mixer, which I'll show you on the next slide. Um, then you bring it back to a simmer um, and you and you adjust the thickness. So if it's too thick, you add a little bit of water, a little bit of stock to thin it up. If it's too thin, you can always thicken it up if you have to with a roux or a cornstarch just to, uh, just to get to the consistency that you want. But always remember, something like a split pea, the longer it sits, the, the, the thicker it's going to get. So if it's not as thick as you want it to be right after, very, right after the bat, give it some time. As it sits in the steam table and continues to cook, it will thicken up. Adjust the seasoning, and then you go ahead and serve away. So uh, these are examples. This is the immersion blender. I'm sure you've seen me uh, use this, um, and you haven't, then you will. Um, when I make a cream soup, um, almost always I use an immersion blender. Um, very few do I leave uh, uh, the, the pieces chunky, but that's perfectly acceptable if you want to do that. And then you're all familiar with the food processor. With the food processor, though, you have to be very careful. You all know how it spins like crazy when you put it in here. You can't go too high because it'll, it'll, it'll come over the top and it'll burn you. You're much better off with an immersion blender. And if you use a blender, uh, you know, like a, like a, um, like a bartender's blender, you need to make sure that you put the top on nice and, 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 and tight and that you hold it when you turn that on because you do not want hot soup spewing, spewing everywhere. Try to stay away from a blender if you possibly can. All right, uh, cream soups. So cream soups can be velvety smooth and thick or they can be chunky. So you can see there's one here that's chunky and there's one over here that's pureed. Uh, I kind of prefer to puree them. I think they, they, they look better, they taste better. Um, but there are certain times, like maybe a mushroom soup that I might leave uh, chunky. Um, I had a kid go to a food uh, competition, a, a chef's competition, and so he made um, spinach soup, and he went to the exact same. The first year he went, he did not puree his soup, and they marked him down for not pureeing his soup. So the second year he went, he pureed his soup, and they marked him down because he pureed his soup. It's really a, a, a personal thing. Each chef is a little different. Um, and it might, it might come down to, do we have enough time to do it? It might come down to that. We don't know. All right. Um, preparation for cream soups. Again, if you've done this with me, 
um, in, in, in shop, then you'll know exactly how, what I'm talking about. If you haven't done it with me, you're going to watch another video, which will be attached to this one. All right. So, or uh, maybe it'll be separate, but either way, you're going to watch a video about cream soups. Um, so, uh, you sweat the vegetables. Um, usually it says butter or oil. I almost always use butter cause it has a better flavor. Um, once this stuff is, is been, uh, sweated, it's, it's kind of transparent. Then I add flour and make a roux right there in the pot. Uh, once my roux is made, and, I, and it only takes a couple minutes, you know, I cook it, get the flour, the flour cooked out of it. Then I add the stock or the milk or the heavy cream, whichever, which, whatever I'm going to use as my as my water, um, as my liquid. Um, and then once the once the uh, the liquid comes up to about 180 degrees, the thickening agent, the roux, will actually work. And then you can adjust the thickness. So, so if, if you had too much roux and it's too thick, you add more. Um, more juice of some kind, whether it's milk or stock, whatever you want, water, heavy cream, uh, to thin it out a little bit. If it's too th if it's too thin, though, then you might have to add some roux to uh, thicken it up a little bit. Uh, then you adjust the seasonings and you serve away. Okay. Uh, specialty soups. Okay, so there's specialty soups, and they are ones that are specific from a specific re region, uh, reflects or shows a special ingredient or technique. Um, so first one we're talking about is bisques. Usually those are made from shellfish. Uh, a lot of times they'll take the bodies of the lobsters. They'll take the claws off. They'll take the, the, the tails off and they'll use those in a special dish. And then what you're left over with is lobster body. Well, that makes a great stock. So you make the stock out of the, out of the um, lobster shells and then you turn that into a cream soup. Almost always has shellfish, almost always has cream in a, a bisque. All right. Chowders. All right. So there's three different types that you'll definitely run into here in New England. And one is a New England clam chowder, and that's going to be a cream-based one. Oops, back to that, please. Thank you. One is the Manhattan clam chowder, and that's going to be a tomato-based uh, clear soup. Um, and then the last one is a Rhode Island clam chowder, and that one has no tomato. It is a clear, it's a clear broth, um, but all three of them have potatoes, and all three of them, potatoes are, are usually what helps to thicken it up. Usually chowders are vegetable or shellfish based. Uh, cold soups. All right, so there's a variety of cold soups that you can have uh, made with yogurt, made with cream, made with fruit. Um, you can have a hot soup that has been chilled, and that can also be served as a cold soup. A good example of that is vichyssoise. Um, it is a version of potato leek soup which I've served um, at Cander before. And essentially it is just a chilled version of potato leek soup. Um, and there's gazpacho. Gazpacho you'll see quite a bit. Um, it is a classic uh, uh, um, Spanish dish actually. And it is a cold tomato soup. A lot of times you'll see it in the summertime. All right, so uh, now I'm gonna attach the cream soup video to this. And I'm also going to attach the consomme video so you can see um, how I make a cream soup, how I make a consomme. Uh, when you get to the cream soup, making the chowder is exactly the same. The only difference is I do not puree at the end. Uh, I add the vegetables, I add the potatoes, uh, I saute it, I add the flour, I make a roux, I add the cream and the clams and the clam juice and bring it to a simmer. When it comes to 180, it, th it thickens up, adjust the thickness and season it, and boom, out it goes. All right, so enjoy the video. So we're going to uh, do consomme today, all right? So I'm gonna take a little bit of our chicken stock. I'm gonna take a little bit of the chicken stock out. I'm gonna set that to the side. I'm gonna wrap that up and I'm gonna hold on to that. And so when we're done, we're gonna take a look at that chicken stock and they're gonna compare it to the consomme, all right? So consomme is nothing more than a clear soup. So we're gonna take our stock and we're gonna clear our stock. We're gonna, we're gonna clarify it, all right? In order to do that, we're gonna use egg whites, ground beef, and a mixture of vegetables, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our egg whites, put them into our ground beef, and we're gonna mix that thoroughly. I'm gonna go ahead and use my hands, mix that thoroughly. Make sure that it's all beaten up. There's a thing in egg whites called albumin, and the albumin is what will uh, grab the impurities inside of the stock, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a raft. So I take this and mix this up as good as I can, and I put that in my vegetables. And I'm gonna get both hands in there. All right, 
this is going to form what's called a raft. And what will happen is it will cook and it'll float to the top. That's why it's called a raft. And what will happen is all the, the stock will go up. I'll, I'll turn it to a boil. When it goes to a boil, I'll turn it down to a simmer. The stock will go up, it'll go through the raft, and it will, it will uh, filter out all the impurities. So it's just as simple as taking that, put it into my stock pot. All right, so it's in my stock pot now. And then I'm gonna add my, my stock. to a simmer all right and what I want to do is I want to see a slow simmer now you can see the raft is forming is all the ground beef and uh, all the vegetables it's okay there's a couple of holes in it that's fine all right turn that down that's a nice little simmer and the, hopefully the, the the stock is gonna come up go through the raft and, and, and go down we talked about uh, convection which means the hot the, on the outside of the pot Right, you can look at the outside of the pot, the, the, the liquid's going to get hot in the bottom and it's going to rotate to the top, cool off, and then it'll go down to the bottom again and come back up because heat always rises. All right? It's even going a little bit too, more, too much more than I want, so I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more. And I'm going to let this simmer nice and slow and easy. And I'm not going to stir it. Let it do its work, it'll reduce and it will absorb all the impurities and clarify the stock. All right, so now it's definitely calmed down. You can see the uh, convection going on with the carrots going up and down, and you can see over in this other point over here, the stock is going up and it's going down, it's going up, it's going down, it's going through that raft, and um, what's happening is it's uh, clarifying it as it goes through the raft. All right, so we've given it a couple of hours. It's still simmering. You can see where it started. The level of the, of the liquid was here, and it's reduced down to there. And we know from our other lectures that reducing, uh, what all it does is it, it lets the, uh, the uh, moisture, the liquid in the stock come out, and it, it concentrates the flavor. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off, go have my lunch, let this cool off, and then we will strain it. Okay, so we have uh, simmered our, our uh, consomme. Uh, we're looking here, I can't pick this up because if I pick this up, it'll dis dislodge it. This is the raft, right? I pulled it off the stove and you can see there's fat on top. I'm gonna have to take that off very gently, but you can see how clear the broth has become. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it into a, uh, I'm gonna come over here. Over here. I'm gonna put it in, into, through a fine chinois, all right, a fine mesh, and then I'm gonna do it again because I already did a little bit. I'm gonna do it again. Um, this is a coffee filter, and I put the coffee filter inside of there to line it. So I hope that um, hope that it'll catch more of the impurities so they don't get through, and then very gently so I don't bust up the raft. One ladle at a time, slow and easy. I pour it through the giant bag. The whole idea is that we get a thin, clear, crystal clear liquid, power packed with flavor because it's been reduced and it's been clarified. And that's what makes consomme. What you can also do is you can take a, a smaller ladle and just submerge it lightly just the very tippy top and you can absorb some of that liquid some of that fat right off the top all you're trying to do is, is take the, the fat away take that out a lot of that fat is coming off of the, uh, the beef So 
here we have our final product. It's a very clear soup. That's what's called consomme. You take in a stock and you turn it into a broth by adding the meat to it and simmering it and reducing it. And uh, so this is our beginning product. That was our broth, that was our stock when we started off. You can see how cloudy it is. And this is the final product. You can actually see to the bottom of the cup and see where it says uh, solo on the bottom of the cup. Uh, that's how clear it comes out after you're all done. Uh, it's definitely labor intense, but uh, it creates a really nice product when it's finished. Uh, very silky, very smooth soup. All right.